Welcome to Expedition Bible. In this video, I travel to Egypt to explore one of the most significant discoveries ever made in biblical archaeology. Flinders Petrie is considered the father figure of the field of archaeology, and in his book, 70 Years in Archaeology, he tells the story of a discovery that he made in Egypt back in 1896. Petrie wrote, To the astonishment of the rest of our party, I said at dinner that night, This will be better known in the world than anything else I have found. He was right, 70 years in archaeology, and this was his greatest find. So I'm here at the Tel Aviv airport. I'm getting ready to leave the modern state of Israel to go explore evidence for ancient Israel. My first stop in Egypt is Luxor, ancient Thebes, where across the Nile River lay the ruins of the mortuary temples, where the pharaohs of old were once worshipped as gods. This one is the mortuary temple of Pharaoh Merneptah, who ruled Egypt from about 1213 to 1204 BC. And this is where, on a winter day in 1896, Flinders Petrie was excavating. Petrie wrote, The site of Merneptah's temple was disastrously dull. I was tempted to leave it as fruitless. Then, in the last corner to be cleared, there lay a black granite stele, over 10 feet high and 5 wide. I'm standing in the mortuary temple of the pharaoh Merneptah. And this is where Flinders Petrie was excavating when he found this inscription. Today you can go to the Cairo Museum and see the, uh, the real stele that this is a replica of the Merneptah stele. A stele is a stone shaped to stand upright and bear an inscription. We still use them today in cemeteries. Petrie wrote, On looking beneath it, there was the inscription of Merneptah. I had the ground cut away below, blocking up the stele on stones, so that one could crawl in and lie on one's back, reading a few inches from one's nose. The excavation's epigrapher was a man named Spiegelberg, and Petrie wrote about him when he says, he lay there copying for an afternoon. <laughs> this just cracks me up because, I mean, think about that. Think about what they did in 1896, where a, a hole is dug under an inscription, and an epigrapher goes into that hole like a gopher, and then spends a whole afternoon with the inscription literally this far away from his face with a candle, you know, translating all of these words. I mean, that is one tough epigrapher. He lay there copying for an afternoon and came out saying, there are names and one I don't know is Sirar. Why, that is Israel, said I. So it is, and won't the reverends be pleased, was his reply. This is a replica of it here in the place of its discovery. The real one we can now go see in the Cairo Museum. So here we are in the Egyptian Museum. This is the Merneptah Stele. I've done a lot of digging and found a lot of things. But if I found something like this, 10 and a half foot inscription, I would freak out <laughs> because, I mean, look at this thing. Can you imagine 10 and a half foot Stele covered with an inscription on both sides? So on this side is the most famous name found in this entire inscription, which is right down here, the name Israel. It's agreed upon that this says Israel. And this is the earliest mention of the name Israel found outside of the Bible. The inscription of Merneptah dates to around 1210 BC. The inscription describes who Merneptah and his army fought with in Canaan. The translation reads, Canaan is plundered, Ashkelon is conquered, Gezer is seized, Yenoam is made non-existent, Israel is laid waste. Ashkelon, Gezer, and Yenoam are followed by the city-state symbol. These three city-states were ruled by kings. There is no city-state symbol shown for the name Israel. Instead, the symbol for a foreign people is shown. 
This means that in 1210 BC, Israel is described as a people that has not yet formed into a nation and therefore is without a king. According to biblical chronology, the date 1210 BC falls in the Judges period, where we find in the book of Judges this repeating phrase, in those days Israel had no king. So we have here this huge inscription, uh, ten and a half feet high, five feet wide, inscribed on both sides. And yet what makes this find so significant is the discovery on it of a single word, the name Israel, found in the Bible over 2400 times. And this wasn't even the first time that it had been found in an inscription through archaeology, but this was the earliest mention of the name Israel outside of the Bible. This is yet another example of the details in the Bible being verified through the details of an inscription dug up through archaeology. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and you'll want to watch this related video where I travel to Sudan to see another inscription that is the earliest mention of the name of the God of Israel, the name Yahweh.